2014 Bowman Jumbo Box Nine. You know who you can hit in this? Who's that? Chris Bryant. A Bra A Ooh. Mookie Betts, little guy named Mookie Betts. That's the one I. Uh, the MLB logo rookie is um, Michael Taylor, or not Michael Taylor, uh, uh, Xander Bogerts. Nice. Um, let's see. Uh, is, it has the prospects autograph set, set list and the Bowman Chrome prospects ch ch autograph checklist. The prospects auto checklist is really small. It includes Chris Bryant, obviously, uh, who really didn't make it. Or, you know, he's nobody. Nobody wants him. I'm kidding. Kidding. Kidding, Cubs fans. <laughs> Don't hurt me. Don't do not hurt I. And, uh, Steve, I, I couldn't answer that, Steve. That's Chris's. Will Mookie ever play for the Dodgers? <laughs> will anybody ever play for anybody? I think that's a that's a question. Like, like, I don't know. I'm just like done. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm I'm emotionally done. Chris wants a beating. It sounds like <laughs> I'll tote one. Yeah. Here we yeah. go. We rolled an eight. Let's go to our randomizer here. Ooh, I'm cheating. I'm on cardboard connection. One, two, looking up product information to make sure I'm right. SGC does grade Inception. They've been grading Inception since the inception of Inception. Yeah. Yo, dog, I heard you like Inception. It's a Sharknado of Inception. Both terrible movies. Yeah. Ooh, shots fired. And that's when you clutch your pearls at Inception. It's bad. Like, in my opinion, it's, 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 it's bad. The fans are getting played, Daniel. Yeah, they are. 1,000% fans are the ones. I remember to switch over so I can read Brentano. I mean, I mean, there's one team they might as well just play all the games in uh, Miami Stadium because uh, being a Marlin fan for so long, I can tell you right now with a 100% certainty, every single game there would be no problem social distance. Like, don't worry about the 25 or 30 percent capacity. They can't fill five. Like, you could the Marlins it just. I mean, the Marlins uh, would play today. Well, the Braves would have a problem with it. The Braves would, but the Marlins play every game all year and have no problem. They, they social distance for years. One second. I have a uh, phone call I have to answer. Answer that phone. What's up, Jeff? How's it going, man? Chris wants a beating, it sounds like. Yeah, Rob, you think Lindor will never play in Cleveland again? I don't follow Lindor in Cleveland enough. I do. I will say that when I went to the National, I went to a Cleveland game, and it was awesome. Um, and the stadium was just as I imagined it as a kid going and watching the Drew Carey show, and the food there was amazing. Uh, so yeah, awesome. Uh, no, no problem at all, Stephen. I'm I was a Marlins fan, but now my son, the he's been on the Cubs and he's gonna be on the Cubs again, so he's obsessed with the Cubs. So I'm slowly coming around to being a Cubs fan because he doesn't allow me to wear my Marlins stuff and he buys me Cubs gear. So um, he wow, six hundred dollars a box. Uh, well, listen to Let Me Get That Polygraph the next couple episodes. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. But, um, yeah, so I'm slowly becoming a Cubs fan because you just buys me. I mean, there's Cubs stuff all around this house now um, because of my son. But, yeah, I grew up a Marlins fan. But I grew up a Marlins fan during the glory years when we had Gary Sheffield when we were buying World Series every two, every three years. It was awesome. And I loved it. We'd buy a World Series. We'd 
think for a year or two, we'd buy another World Series, then we'd dump it, all those guys. It's like you're going then shopping. Then for some reason we stopped. Yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Charles, yeah. yeah. We'll Cleveland see. is a wonderful bar ballpark, Gary. I was very impressed when we went into at the National, especially compared to um, when we went to, uh, I forget where we went um, this last National. Right, Chris, what ballpark we went to. Went to, um, the but, J uh, 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 went to the White Sox, uh, city, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Kamitsky. Yeah, no, it wouldn't, it's, yeah. yeah, whatever they're calling it. But yeah, like, with the Marlins, it's like, waiter, how's the Sheffield today? Ooh, I know I'm yeah. getting, I know I'm getting the Conine. I'll take a Conine. I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> it was wonderful. Every year, as a kid, never, everyone at school would be like, Talking trash, like, oh, you know, all the ones that were fans of other teams, they're like, you guys are buying championships, and I'd be like, yeah, but championships are on the wall, dude. Like, well, I mean, work. buying championships is, is iffy. I mean, look out, the Yankees try to do it every year, and, hey, you know. Hey, look at the Marlins, man. What but but what, what I'm saying is, got. saying you're buying a championship is kind of a misnomer because you can't buy a championship. Right. Like, you well, can stack the deck. Ridiculous money. Yes. Yeah. Stacking the deck. There you go. Perfect, yeah. perfect yeah. way to say it. Stacking the deck those years. Um, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, back to what I was saying. Cleveland's food was amazing. The ballpark was awesome. But yeah, I've been slowly being converted to a Cubs fan um, just because of my son. Um, as long as they, they keep putting him on the Cubs, the longer I'll probably end up being forced to be a Cubs fan. So. His favorite player is Ernie Banks, and he's oh. five, and it's insane. He knows more about Ernie Banks than I do. Well, here we go. We have our order. Jeff White, pack one. Good luck, Jeff. I'm going to go heat my coffee up real quick while this starts. Savage McFresh. Yeah. <laughs> Ian Kinsler, B. Phil, Darvish. Get to the first Bowman. Billy Burns. Hey, there's a good Chris Bryant first Bowman. Robert Stevenson. Garrett Cole Sparkle. Melvin Mercedes. Gabriel Noah. So, Chris Bryant, first Bowman, was the clear star of that pack. Cleveland takes a lot of crap, but it's not as bad as everybody says. I mean, if you're a believer in Chris Bryant, I mean... He was nobody in college. He only won one Golden Spikes award. I mean, come on. Only wins one Golden Spikes award. You're better than that, KB. Should have won three. Should have won the Golden Spikes award in high school. I'm just kidding. His amateur resume is as good as any, anybody's. Pack two. The Jed Gorko, who always trips me out. Have I told you Travis, Dar Travis Darnold? Matt Davidson. Major leaguers there. Alex Reyes. Hiroki. Oh, Hiroki Kuroda. All right. Edwin Diaz. John Perubek did not make it. Pat Stover. Contreras. Sam Mole. If you ain't first, you last, Chris Bryant. I don't know. Baseball, there's a lot of room. Andrew, maybe try logging out of fa of uh, YouTube and logging back in. Maybe that'll work. Let's 
see. Uh, Eric Johnson. I don't know why I said Eric Johnson like, like it's something special. Matt Bowman, Gumpton, Manny Margot, Marcus Stroman, uh, Continuation Wilmer Flores, Ty Butters, Mark Appel. This was a big, big dog when this product released. Not so much anymore. Rendon. Why is it always raining here lately? Oh, it's something with your embed settings. Ah. Pack four to double E. Back in the day, you'd have been happy as crap to get that Mark Appel first Bowman Chrome. Not so much now. Josh Hader, Alfonso Soriano in a green, number to 150, Tapia, Matt Bowman, J.R. Murphy, Wilmer Flores, I don't know, I think, I think it, I think it counts. Like it's a year, it's a year's a year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's happening. We'll see who shows up. We'll see who shows up. He's talking about on the on the screen actually in restream, Steve. Trout. These trouts are sneaky good. Especially parallels. Nelson Rodriguez. Healy. Nomar Mazzara. John Singleton. Where are our autos? Have not seen any of the autos yet. And we're on pack five. I would absolutely watch batting practice on TV. I'm like a, like a, I need a hit. The, yeah, the proposal does have playoffs though, Russ. Or, or yeah. what, what they're going with. Um, it's not really a proposal. This is Rob Manfred uh, pulling, uh, saying, "Okay, well, here's the season." And now the players' association will probably file a grievance, and we will see where it shakes out from there. Yep. Jeter. Hey. Did you see Russ's comment that says we're both super low? I did. I did. I don't. I, I, that's not my indicator. Suggests that we are at full volume. Yeah. Same here. There we go. We got a Ninja Turtle, Leonardo Leonardo Molina. Nice. No. Nice. Not not nice. Not nice. I appreciate I your optimism. I was kidding. Yeah. Ninja Turtles. Like... That's the thing about busting products like this. <laughs> like. Players have had time to not make it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Players have had time so, to not make it, and Leonardo Molina yeah. did, did not. Right. So, Chris, I got a question for you while we open this pertaining to baseball. Yeah? With baseball having, like we're like you were just saying, uh, quite a bit of time before we play ball, again, like significant ball, like in everything, um... Do you think now is is now the time to be moving a lot of your prospect stuff, or is now the time to be sending a lot of the prospect stuff off to be graded for when it comes back? Prospects, not rookies, but some of the prospects, because I think, from what I understand, those are the guys that could probably be hurt the most from all of it. 
case by case basis. If a guy's got a chance, oh, Jose Ramirez rookie logo paper, he's good. Case by case basis. I think yes, that uh, I, I think that uh, if a guy's got a chance to see major league time this year, you uh, at least get ready to sell him. Frenchy Cordero right. auto. Uh, but if it's a guy that's going to be in the minors, like if it's Wander Franco, who's probably not going to see a major league roster this year, this year, Julio yeah. Rodriguez, I think you sit on those for 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 next year. Right. Uh, but if it's a guy that uh, like like Robert or Dylan Carlson, or or a guy that should break camp with big league clubs, right. but what about some, hmm? What about some of these guys from like this year's class? Oh. Lux. Hold on. Oh. Oh. Okay, so what if it's what if it's a guy like uh like people from this year's class, like Volt and people like that with some potential do you go on and send those things in or is it one of those just go on and move them and well, I mean, it really depends on what your strategy is. I mean, there's some, right, right. there is some 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 guys that right now, the cards are as much as they'll ever be. Like yeah. depending on what Vlope's uh, career trajectory is, I mean, we could be at the top of the top of the market for him. Yeah, really depends on what you feel about their projections. Me personally, right. I, I, you know, I'm I'm sending them in because I like Vlope long term. Right, me too. That's what I'm doing. I just want to know if you're doing that. Yeah. Uh, um, Russ, that is a wonderful thing. A, a fourth grading company would be great, but the only reason, the only way I would want it is if this could happen. There is a machine. It's used in the medical field. It's a very expensive machine, but it can be programmed to where you would be able to put a card in and it would be able to analyze the card Ooh. and give you every single detail and flaw on the card, break it down. And if you could modify that machine to make it 100% computerized type grading, I'd be all for it. But I don't know how I don't know how long that process would take to grade each card with that machine. I don't know how much how expensive they are. I don't know how expensive it would be to make the developer that would be able to do that. You know, a lot of money would have to go into it. But if it was something like that, I would absolutely 100% welcome it. Another grading company where it's just uh, opinions and stuff like that, like we're getting right now. Uh, we've got three amazingly good companies. We're good. Yeah. I mean, we're just going to have to accept that grading is going to take a little bit, which it should, because um, not as long as it's taking, but it should take some time because they should be analyzing your card. Where it should take more time is they should take more time looking at your card. Listen, people don't right. even... We've, we've got big companies with like 40-year histories here doing this. Yeah. Publicly yeah. traded companies, and people still don't trust them. Exactly. Like, if people still go... Like, I still see threads every day. Is PSA swapping out my cards? No, dummy. But you still see the threads. Like, right. what makes you think that a startup could come in and avoid that? Like, you know, I, I just, I don't see, I don't see where it's a good use. Of yeah, the, like the, I said, the only, the only way that it would be a good use, in my opinion, was if you could come out with some type of slab that was waterproof, wow. fireproof, and you were able to use the technology that, like Charles mentioned, uh, the a same similar type of technology to where it was a computer-based printout. I think that's something that people would try. I think it's something that that would be the only option that I would look at and say, Okay, here's something I'd take a look at. Every other option that came out, because there are other ones that have come out, especially up in Canada, they're grading a lot of Canadian cards now. Um, the, that the I would leaf, just like, the, the company with the leaf. Yeah, yeah. I I would just look at it as like, Ugh, I'm. I would just buy it to resub it with someone through someone else. And so, I don't know. Uh, it, you would have to have some massive advantage for a fourth to even need to come into the market because like Chris said, you've got publicly traded companies Ooh. with some 
graders with the most experience in the world with the pro with and we still have complaints. Anyway. Fernando Rodney Orange. There's my rant on that one. Mookie Betts and Josh Hader Chrome. There needs to be a card museum, Steve. And that's a great idea. Hit me up. We'll start one up. <laughs> I, I, like, at one time, the Major League Baseball Hall of Fame was looking at starting a card museum. The problem um, is... They're going to have... Uh, well, Museum what? Works works on grants and loans. Like, yeah. they work on grants um, to operate, and they work on loans for exhibits. And uh, whereas people are typically willing to donate art... Well, not donate, but to loan art, baseball cards yeah. are a whole different story. Yeah, they ended up, from what I understood, they did want to, and what they're doing instead is they are honoring um, uh, artist renditions of some classic cards, like artist Tim Carroll, a good friend of both mine and Chris's. Uh, you guys know him. He cuts up the baseball cards and makes the amazing photos. His, uh, I think it's the Kofax that's hanging up in Cooperstown now. Yeah. Um, they used him and a couple other artists to take iconic cards of certain players and make a wing like that. And so you're seeing stuff like that because, like Chris just said, uh, it's well, a little more difficult. I mean, if you go to... And also, like, there's baseball card memorabilia at, like, legitimate museums. Like, if you go to the Atlanta History Center and go look yeah. at the 70s era exhibit... The 60s and 70s, yeah. there, there's a thing on Hank Aaron where there is a um, nice Hank Aaron's top card and a nice Hank Aaron signed baseball that may or may not have been donated by me. But <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife worked. So my wife worked there, so you know. That's uh, awesome. So, so they have that stuff in in the Atlanta History Center, which is a awesome legit legit museum here in Atlanta. Yeah, I've been thinking about donating my friend Tarkenton uh, ball because it's uh, Mark Apple. It, it's Here's a good a third one. autograph. It is a womp womp. Womp womp. Who are you gonna donate it to? Like, what museum would display a friend Tarkenton? It would be the uh, the Viking. It would be I donate it to like the Minnesota oh. Vikings like area. Yeah, yeah. Friend Arkansas is actually a big deal where I'm at. I live in between. I live near Athens, oh. and uh, Frank Friend well, Arkansas is, is, is from Roswell, Georgia. Oh, so well, then it, I could do somewhere yeah, down there. Yeah, he, he's 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 a local boy, uh, University of Georgia, Roswell, Georgia. So oh, well, Fran gets a lot of love here. I don't Sometimes. think there are any museums that would that that would do it. Like, oh, okay. Atlanta, he's not part of Atlanta history. He's part of Athens history. Maybe the right. maybe the University of Georgia museum, but uh, right. I don't know if they're actually looking for stuff. And I don't know anybody that 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 works there, like I do the history center. Yeah, yeah. I got it's a ball that I, I always loved Jeff it because my stepdad won the ball Ooh. and Fran Tarkin and actually uh, threw the ball to me and I caught it. So I actually caught a pass from Fran Tarkin. Nice. So. Yeah, that ball, which was pretty cool. Um, but I'd always like it to go somewhere. I mean, it's nothing I'd sell, but I'd give it, I'd have it displayed somewhere. Julio Urias, Black these Refractor. Are some, these are some beautiful cards. That blue is stunning. Still has not And the black. Ooh, that black is nice. Yeah, Julio Urias. For Chris Bryant, it'd been nicer, but you know, your Urias is not the worst, right? Not the best either, but hey, this box was not. The What's best. up, Mike? How's it going, my man? Yeah, Brentano, still no restream, but I got you here, bro.